What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. Okay, so I am currently all hopped up on a combination of cold medicine, like like drowsy cold medicine, and mucinex, because I have a cold. So I have no idea what's gonna come out of my mouth over the course of the next 10 to 15 minutes. There's a really good chance I won't remember it come morning. Man, this is gonna be an adventure. Now, for a long time, we have not done the video series, What If, based on the Marvel Comics line, What If. The What If Marvel Comics line was basically like, what if like this happened instead of that happening? Like, what if Marvel hadn't pissed everybody off after Secret Wars? Like, what what if a Spider-Man had stayed Venom? What if Disney bought Fox for $52 billion? What if things happened differently than the way that we're used to? What if Hugh Jackman decided to come back as Wolverine? But I figured we would bring this back. And if we're going to do this, then we're gonna do a video on the Juggernaut becoming the Flash because I told you guys I would do it at one point and I haven't done it in forever. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're not really gonna be asking the question, what if Juggernaut took up the mantle of the Flash because that does not sound cool. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be answering the question, what would happen if the Juggernaut were able to tap into the speed force, thereby gaining the powers of the Flash? So in order to answer that question, we have to first look at two things, Juggernaut's powers as they exist in Marvel Comics and what the speed force is, as well as what powers it grants to those who can tap into it. After we do that, we can discuss what would likely happen if this actually did occur. First though, we're going to look at the Juggernaut. So for those of you guys who don't know, Juggernaut is the alter ego of Kane Marco, who is the stepbrother of Professor X, also known as Charles Xavier. I don't know why you wouldn't know that. While serving in the Korean War, Marco finds a ruby inside an ancient temple. Inscribed on the ruby are the words, whosoever touches this gem shall be granted the power of the Crimson Gem of Sidorak. Henceforth, you who read these words shall become forevermore a human juggernaut. So, what the Gem of Sidorak actually does is transform those who touch it into the avatar of the multi-dimensional, you know, pan-dimensional demon Sidorak, meaning the juggernaut is able to channel those powers powers, which are quite immense. Now, as for what Juggernaut's powers actually are, he possesses near immeasurable strength. He's among the strongest non-cosmic characters in Marvel Comics, and we know this because we've seen Juggernaut go up against characters like Colossus, The Thing, Thor, King Hyperion, which is basically Marvel's Superman, and even World War Hulk, and match them blow for blow. In addition to his strength, Juggernaut possesses seemingly limitless durability, which is bolstered even more by his ability to channel the gem's energy into a force field that basically renders him immune from any attack. Juggernaut has been able to survive powerful attacks from people like Thor with his God Blast, Cyclops' Optic Blast, and even several punches from the Incredible Hulk. Juggernaut is also able to heal insanely quickly from any damage he suffers, survive without food, water, or air, and does not grow tired from physical activity, something that is not true for me. So, because of all these factors as well as his heightened speed, Juggernaut is able to build up a great deal of momentum once he's in motion and frequently just like charges at his opponents as his primary means of attack. He just runs after you. But once he's in motion and builds up sufficient momentum, Juggernaut is pretty much impossible to stop. Although opponents with sufficient strength have been able to redirect that direction of his movement. Now, the only exception I could think of, of somebody who is not basically a god more or less, being able to stop the Juggernaut was when the Incredible Hulk did it, when he was basically one of the horsemen of Apocalypse. Meaning the Incredible Hulk had his powers augmented by celestial technology. It was not just base Incredible Hulk. So the question that we're trying to figure out here is what would happen if Juggernaut was somehow able to tap into the Speed Force? Well, to answer that, we first have to explain what the Speed Force is. The Speed Force is a concept within DC Comics that was created during the lightning strike that gave Barry Allen his super speed. Now, as Barry runs, he generates the Speed Force and it has expanded to exist throughout the entire DC multiverse as this kind of kinetic wall of positively charged energy. Now, all the speedsters within the DC universe can access the Speed Force and when one of them dies, they sort of merge with it and from the Speed Force, they derive a multitude of powers and abilities. Now, the primary and most obvious of these powers that the various speed derive, specifically Barry Allen, is the weird run of Ezra Miller from Justice League. I know I'm not the only one who noticed it. I know a lot of you guys are just like, dude, man, dude, this cold medicine is kicking in. I know a lot of you guys are like, man, dude, this, man, this, that guy runs weird. And he does. How does a Flash run weird? The guy's job is to run. You would think the Flash would have like the perfect form when it comes to running. Not only am I impressed that he's the fastest person alive, but just Look at how he runs gracefully. He doesn't run like a goof like he does in Justice League. Man, it's it's so weird. Anyway, obviously the primary powers is superhuman speed, which also 
include superhuman reflexes, agility, cognition, stamina, and even healing. Now, the Flash's super speed is well documented in DC Comics as he's performed several feats that indicate that his speed is practically limitless. As an example of just how fast the Flash is, during the final crisis event, he's able to outrun the Black Racer, which is an aspect of the Speed Force that serves as the entity of death for speedsters who seeks to return them to the Speed Force, which resulted in Barry Allen basically having outran death for about 20 years. Nothing else made sense in that story, but that did. It's also been repeatedly established that the Flash can travel much faster than the speed of light and has even been able to run so fast that he can manipulate time as we see in the Flashpoint event when he traveled back in time to stop the murder of his mother and then traveled back in time again to let her die, which resulted in three different universes merging into one. Sound confusing? It is. Near limitless speed is not the only power afforded by the Speed Force, however. Barry Allen has demonstrated the ability to vibrate the molecules of his body at high enough frequency that he can pass through solid objects and even dimensional barriers. He's able to rotate his arms at a high enough speed to produce cyclones and can throw arcs of lightning at his enemies. Another incarnation of the Flash, Wally West, also performed a feat known as the Infinite Mass Punch. Now, the Infinite Mass Punch is possible when the Flash is running at a speed close to the speed of light, which causes him to gain a mass relative to that speed and allows him to deliver a devastating punch. Now, as to the actual force of it, it was described by writer Grant Morrison as being equivalent to the power of a white dwarf star. I have no idea how much power that is. So, what would happen if Juggernaut was able to tap into the speed force? I think we need to start with figuring out how that would happen in the first place. So, in the case of both Barry Allen and Wally West, they became speedsters when lightning struck a cabinet full of chemicals that they were standing next to, causing them both to be doused in the chemicals and then of course gain access to the speed force now i don't know why juggernaut would be standing next to a cabinet full of chemicals he's kind of a stupid guy so it's not like he'd be engaging in science or something like that you know it's not like he's like hey i'm just standing next to this wall of chemicals for science it's not like it, it would it wouldn't work that way with juggernaut you know he's just he's kind of a dumb guy but for the sake of this story we're going to assume that he is for whatever reason you know what put the reason down in the comment section i want to know why you guys think juggernaut is standing next to a wall full of chemicals i have no idea why i'm asking asking you to do that, but I think it'd be funny to see some of the replies that you guys have. But regardless, we're just going to go with that whole thing. So our story would begin with the middle of a battle with the, like the Juggernaut and the X-Men. Now, of course, this battle goes down as it usually does with Juggernaut getting the upper hand initially, but the X-Men fighting back and holding their own. Then all of a sudden, a strange portal opens in the sky and like a single bolt of lightning just like escapes through it and hits the Juggernaut before the portal closes. Now, before anyone can process what just happened, Juggernaut just takes off from the battle. Much the surprise of the X-Men. Now from there, we cut to a scene of the Justice League meeting in the Watchtower with Batman explaining that it appears that during a recent battle between the Flash and the Reverse Flash, a hole was ripped in the barrier that separated the DC multiverse from another unknown and unexplored universe. When the question is asked how Batman knew this, Batman just kind of shrugs and says, I don't know, the writers said I do because I'm Batman and I can do anything. Now Flash then states that he feels like his connection to the Speed Force has been weaker ever since his fight with the Reverse Flash, as if a piece of the Speed Force was missing. So, the Justice League decides they're going to have to find a way to reopen the portal so they can go to the Unknown Universe and set everything right because they believe that if the Speed Force has been introduced to that universe and falls into the wrong hands, the results could be catastrophic. Now, as we cut back to the Marvel Universe, we see Juggernaut streaking across a remote stretch of desert testing out his new powers. I mean, dude, he's hauling. He's, he's just racing. Man, he's like, like a big dust trail behind him. It'd be kind of cool. But he delivers a classic supervillain monologue that lets us know exactly what it is that he's thinking. You know, the more I think about the Juggernaut streaking across the desert, there could be like a meme about that, right? You know, like what she calls and says she's home alone, then it's like the Juggernaut's just racing across the desert, there's like a stream of sand up in the air behind him. I think it'd be hilarious. Somebody needs to make that. I do make that and tweet it to me, and I will tweet that back out. Like I will I will retweet that. That would be hilarious. But with these newfound powers, there's no way the X-Men can stop him, and he finally accomplishes his ultimate goal. You know, he has the intention anyway of accomplishing his ultimate goal of defeating the X-Men once and for all, which I guess is actually Juggernaut's ultimate goal, it's kind of funny. In Marvel Comics, the only real motivation the Juggernaut has, you know, for being the Juggernaut is to try to destroy Charles Xavier, and that's really about it. He's a pretty simple villain. Didn't really have a whole lot of motivations and schemes outside of that, but basically that's what the Juggernaut sets out to do. You know, he goes all the way back to Westchester and attacks the Xavier School. Now, at first, the X-Men really think nothing of this. I mean, they'll just go out, they'll meet the Juggernaut, and, you know, and they'll basically battle him, and, you know, it'll just be another fight with the Juggernaut that they'll eventually win. But they soon realize that this is not the same juggernaut that they fought in the past. Colossus, who's been able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with 
Juggernaut in the past is unable to land a single punch due to Juggernaut's super speed. Now, of course, desperate for help, Professor X sends out a telepathic message to Quicksilver asking him for help, but when Quicksilver arrives, it becomes clear that he's unable to keep up with the Juggernaut, something that makes sense, which is why I don't understand the videos where people ask the question, who's faster, Flash or Quicksilver? Why is that a question? It's like asking what's harder, steel or wood? You can Google Marvel's version of the Flash and you'll come up with like seven people who are faster than Quicksilver. But from here, Juggernaut just lays waste to the X-Men. I mean, dude, dude it's, it's ridiculous, man. Juggernaut laying waste to the X-Men with the Flash's powers, dude, they would just get wrecked. It wouldn't even seem fair. But when all hope is lost, the same portal that had opened earlier opens again and we see the Justice League appear in the Marvel Universe. Now, as soon as they do, Juggernaut charges at him and immediately the Flash can tell that Juggernaut is in possession of the Speed Force. The Flash engages Juggernaut in battle and leads him away from the mansion so that the rest of the League can survey the damage. Now, this of course leads to a conversation between the Justice League and Professor X, who explains that Juggernaut has a vulnerability to psychic attacks, but that they couldn't exploit it because they have to remove his helmet, which they couldn't do. Now, of course, at first, Xavier tries to send a message to the Flash to attempt to remove the helmet of the Juggernaut. Now, Flash gives it his best shot, but while he is as fast as the Juggernaut, he's not nearly as strong. And so, of course, the fight between the two starts to get out of hand. Now, still linked to Professor X through his telepathy, the Flash receives a message to return to Westchester, which he complies with, summoning every bit of his connection to the Speed Force to try to put some distance between himself and the Juggernaut. Now, once they arrive, a new plan devised by the Justice League and Professor X is revealed as Superman delivers a powerful punch to Juggernaut's helmet, nearly knocking it off. Following this, we see a pretty epic battle between Juggernaut and the combined effort of Superman and the Flash, with Flash using a speed to maneuver Juggernaut into Superman's punches until his helmet comes off, which leads to Professor X launching a telepathic attack to basically shut down Juggernaut's mind temporarily. Now, with Juggernaut incapacitated, the story starts to wind down. Flash uses one of his other abilities, which basically grants him the ability to steal the speed of others, or their really their kinetic energy, more or less, but he basically uses it to strip the Juggernaut of his access to the Speed Force. After this, the Justice League returns to their universe, thanks to some gadget Batman's invented, most likely, because it's Batman and it was probably in his utility belt the whole time. We, of course, cut to Juggernaut waking up from his trance in the middle of the desert, only to find out that he no longer has any connection to the Speed Force, and therefore, his speed powers are pretty much gone, which of course causes him to scream, no, you know, like Darth Vader at the end of the Revenge of the Sith, which is one of the dumbest endings to a movie ever, George Lucas. I'm so glad Disney bought those rights from you because all you were ever going to do is screw it up even more. So while Juggernaut and the Speed Force would be insanely powerful because of his immense strength and speed, as I stated earlier, the What If comics were almost always one shot. So we needed a resolution to the problem that would result in the good guys basically winning by the end of the issue. And I think that this is the most likely scenario for that to happen. You know, could Juggernaut have caused an insane amount of damage across the face of the world? Absolutely, he probably could have killed all the superheroes. But as we've talked about earlier, that's never really been Juggernaut's mission. He basically just wants to take out the X-Men and that's really about it. So I didn't really feel like putting the ending to a story where Juggernaut kills everybody in the Marvel Universe. But if you do want to see it, post a comment down below and uh, I will have my writer Ryan get to work on that and we'll basically do Flash, you know, Juggernaut with the powers of the Flash kills the Marvel Universe. But anyway, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and yeah, I will catch you all later. Peace.